What's up, nerds? Jimmy here with... Hi. Still, Still Kyle, guys. Still Kyle. Still Kyle. So, today, we're going to talk about Marvel and all things Marvel. And it seems like Marvel's having some difficult times. Seems like it's a bit in shambles as uh, some cre content creators have been thrown around recently. Yes. it's um, We know just outwardly that they've had some difficulty with their shows mm -hmm. in that they took the daredevil show and the team and kind of started from scratch with now going to a showrunner format. Mm -hmm. um, we did see the first trailer for echo, which came out, but we know echo had some issues during production and now they're finally getting there. I definitely think Kingpin's going to be the standout of that. series. It seems like it. Yeah. It definitely seems like it, which is obviously a big part of daredevil too. So that'll be nice. We also know mm -hmm. Punisher is going to be in, Daredevil, which I'm a big also, fan Also, I, sorry, I might be completely off, but didn't Kingpin start as a Spider-Man villain? I don't know exactly where he started, mm -hmm. but he's he has been a big presence in Daredevil. Okay. Cool. Because I just remember him being a Spider-Man villain growing yes, up, and I just don't remember the Daredevil aspect, and I feel like that, I'm not the only one that's confused by that. No, he is, he is a New York villain, which mm. definitely takes into account Spider-Man, right. obviously. Hell's Kitchen. But... Daredevil, he has been a big foe with Daredevil for a long time. Just even in the first wonderful Ben Affleck movie, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's coming back. Yes. I did Bull Three. So. <laughs> I know. I, I'm actually now excited for that one. So let's let's start here with the Variety article yeah. and break down what they basically talked about in this article. The big three takeaways are they're not sure about Kang and Jonathan Majors due to the legal trouble and Ant Man Three doing pretty poorly as well as they haven't seen the reaction of that they've liked from loki so i let's start with this one if they do move forward with kang what do you do to show that he's more powerful than thanos like how do you how would you go about that well i think Marvel? they've kind of already shown that is that thanos was one thing and yes we do have two and that he came from the past to the present mm -hmm. when they fix things but kang is like everywhere mm -hmm. almost all the time wherever he wants to be right um they've shown that in loki they showed it in ant-man mm -hmm. in that he is this unbelievably powerful you defeat one almost like hydra you cut the head off of one and then there's two mm -hmm. and he seems to be everywhere anytime whatever he wants to do so i think that makes him more powerful and the time travel aspect of kang in that he can basically go back and create something that is going to affect the way future and it really makes my brain hurt sometimes mm -hmm. when you think of how it worked in loki i think that makes him more powerful but i think one of the problems with him is he's not as well known right even as they're introducing him in the marvel universe within the general public who's kang kang the conqueror what's that about i don't understand but i think you could make the same argument for thanos at the end of the avengers movie you know what i mean like i don't think people knew who Thanos was. There's like the chair reveal and everyone's like, oh my gosh, yeah. dude. Everyone's like, who the hell is at the end of the Avengers movie? You know what I mean? Like everyone didn't know who Thanos was at the time. And it wasn't until you got the performance that was in like Infinity War that you were like, okay, this guy's a big deal. Well, I think that's part of the problem with Marvel's success though, mm -hmm. is that because there was no Marvel starting with Iron Man mm -hmm. and then Iron Man built these things up, we as an audience were more patient to experience what Marvel was going to be. Right. But now with the success of Endgame, I think we, the audience, and now Disney's reactionary to it, we need everything to be amazing right away. Right. And I know the Variety article is saying that Marvel is in shambles, so to speak. But in my opinion, Eternals was really the only one that didn't hit the mark as far as telling a good story. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about box office. That's a different beast. I think COVID is really screwed up people going yeah. to the theater to see things i don't think we can never I can necessarily go off of what box office box office is doing but when it comes to storytelling i think eternals was really the only one where it was like i really missed the mark on what marvel is trying to do building this new phase and i think the biggest thing that a lot of people that i've heard that are talking about this situation say is that they're tired of having to spend like 40 hours over here to yeah. understand this movie right and that that's the, the Disney Plus problem, right? Yeah. Where it's like you have this micro story being told in Loki that could 
potentially affect the marbles yeah. and if you didn't watch loki or you didn't know that that was going on then like this plot point here may not make sense or this character doesn't make any sense so it's cool from an aspect of like people that are super into it and have the time to explore all these avenues or whatever but i think it alienates like a decent amount of the fan base that just wants to be able to watch an awesome movie and understand what's going on and I think that is what's causing the box office issues um, due to all these movies coming out and being like, well, I didn't see this, so I don't know. Like, you have to watch, to be ready for the Marvels, you have to watch Captain Marvel, you have to watch WandaVision, you have to watch Miss Marvel. You know what I mean? Like, so most people that are movie watchers are like, the only one I've seen is Captain Marvel. Yeah. But they have no idea who Chameleon Khan is. They have no idea who Photon or Spectrum or whatever they're going to call her is. And that's unfortunate because they're really awesome characters and this is pro probably going to flop due to that being the case right and that they're already showing that pre-sales are lower than black adam mm -hmm. which is an issue yeah we already know fan base is not thrilled with female-led superheroes which right. sucks because right. captain marvel is a great movie right so that sucks too and i feel that once again we're going to get this reactionary well it didn't hit the box office it's like Right. What if it was a great story? Who cares? Right. But Disney right now as a company is having issues. Pixar has not had what it usually has as far as box office returns. Right. Bob Iger is came back in and is trying to fix things with parks and all that. Mm -hmm. And they were just forced to buy back buy the remaining share of Hulu, which is not exactly what they wanted from Comcast. Right. So they now own Hulu and Disney Plus. And one of the reasons that got them into this was them going to Marvel, we need more content. We need more content. Mm -hmm. So Marvel obliged, but now it's like, maybe it was too much, too fast. And so the next plot thread that this article details is bringing back the original six Avengers for a new film and or for Secret Wars. And there's been a lot of rumblings of Robert Downey Jr. already signing this contract and that it's basically like their way of like, okay, we built up this you know phase four introduced 30 characters but now we're just gonna kind of throw that off to the side and bring back everyone that you love to get like a box office smash and i don't necessarily think that that's like the marvel fan in me is like i would love to see that again yeah. and like it's it's it sucks because like it's not like you have to have the core six avengers to have a good movie but like we love iron man we yeah. love black widow like getting rid of those two like characters and then bringing them back i of course everyone's going to be here for it but it takes away the impact of anyone dying in it the really stories does. and yes i know the comics have been famous for that for a long time like they'll kill off a character then six months later they'll do a new series or whatever but i think it just really just destroys that impact in the whole if you're telling this as one linear story it this impact moment loses it as soon as you get here or if you know that this movie is even part of the timeline right as someone who's watching it from this like 100 years from now they're gonna be like oh well it doesn't matter that he died here because i know that he comes back in you know yeah. avengers secret wars or whatever but i think they could do really two really cool things with that is they could pull him in for like a cameo in Secret Wars, or they could do exactly what I think they're gonna do and just pull all the things that you love into the same universe. Like, give us a Miles Morales, give us, uh, you know, Ben Affleck's Daredevil, give, like, <laughs> give us yeah. all of these people and then just cut off the portals. And then maybe we lose the characters that weren't doing well, like, say, your Photons or your Miss Marvels or like Echo, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. We have no idea if those are properties are going to do well, but it gives them the ability, if they don't, to dump them and sever the head with this multiversal story, which I think is something that if they're going to do that, they need to be swift with because I don't know if we're even going to make it that far if that's the case. And that's one of the things I read. I don't remember if it was in the Variety article is that one of Marvel's biggest problems is because of the writer strike, mm -hmm. they weren't really able to tackle a lot of these problems because they couldn't have writers on board with fixing this stuff. Right. So unfortunately, we're having executives talk about how to fix the problem. And we all know how that doesn't necessarily go well because executives are more about the money than they are about telling great stories. Right. So hopefully now that the writer strike is over that we can 
get back to telling great stories. But I know one of the things we've talked about is Deadpool and Deadpool mm -hmm. can essentially either do some great things and fix this right. or do some horrible things and make it worse. Right. But Deadpool, because of his character, can bring in multiverse things from anywhere, everywhere and do whatever. From what I remember, that was about halfway done with their production when the strike hit. Mm -hmm. Actor Strike at this moment is coming to an end, but it's still going on. So that's not back in production yet. But I really do think that Deadpool could be an impetus to fix a lot of these issues because we still have a lot of big properties that Marvel hasn't touched yet right. that they got back several years ago, speaking of X-Men and Fantastic that's, Four, yep. which would help the name recognition for a lot of these things where this to me is one of the reasons why we're bringing back those original Avengers is because we know them, their name recognition. Mm -hmm. We love those characters. I do fear sort of this, let's appease the fans because that's who they want to see. And I feel like DC did that for a long time and that has been in shambles for a long time. But if they do something, and I'm not saying this is the great plan, but like Iron Man is the new Jarvis and that his wit and his intelligence is there but it's not really having tony stark live and in person all the mm -hmm. time because he's dead it takes away from anything